And good morning, everyone. I suppose it's a uh, more of a good afternoon for everybody on the East Coast. Good morning for the West Coast. And I guess for those of you that are watching this in the future, a hearty hello from the past here. So today, welcome to uh, another of the Full Cup of Series webinars here. My name is Jim Ripp. I'm the manager of technical training and sales development here at Full Cup of Systems. I'm the moderator. And we have Justin Strauss uh, joining us today from Roland Professional AV. Uh, I see there's some more of you still logging in here. We got uh, great attendance today. So uh, right at the beginning here, I'm just going to go over some quick housekeeping things here so that uh, you know how everything runs. Uh, there is a question and answer feature that you have. Uh, you can place your questions anytime during the demonstration. Uh, and then we will not answer those until the end of the presentation. Then we'll present those to Justin. He can, he can give us a lowdown on all of that. Uh, recording of the presentation will be made available. Um, so if you have to duck out about halfway through or any time during this, no worries. We will send you a link uh, for future viewing. It will also be uh, posted on our website. And at the very end, there's a very short survey. If you would do us a favor, fill that out. This really helps us to be in touch with you and to what content you want to hear uh, in these webinars. So today, Justin, Justin is with us live. Justin, where are you located at this point? Uh, Los Angeles, California area. Ah, uh, so it's bright and early in the morning for you. Sure is. <laughs> So uh, we, you can see uh, uh, a little brief description about Justin. Justin, I have to call this out. This is great. I've never seen this in a bio or any kind of description, but the last statement on this, saving the money to purchase sound equipment was one of the best decisions of my life. It has introduced me to some very wonderful people and diverse creative visions. That is, I would have to concur with that. Uh, starting early on, definitely introduced to a lot of creative people. Uh, in this industry, it is has been an amazing ride. So, anything else you want to tell us about yourself before we I, get into this uh, presentation here? I mean, I'm flattered you pulled that out of my LinkedIn profile. Um, yeah, I did some location sound and audio posts for years on the side, and um, you know, as my schedule allowed, and it was oh, it was so much fun, and just you know, some of the places you go, and you know. Got to sh shoot down in Brazil at one point for a documentary. So, you know, life is rich sometimes, you know, and that was, uh, thanks for including that. So, Justin, I, I, I pushed over a, uh, a the presentation to you. See if you can uh, grab that. Let me see. Well, I hope this is sufficient. Um, Let's just uh, get started because I don't want to take too much of your time here with uh, setup here. So, uh, you know, obviously one of the big questions right now is how do I stream? And in this situation, it's a matter of, you know, needing cameras, microphones and laptops, a stream ready video signal. So on the VR series, we have uh, USB uh, outputs on the back. And um, so also a fast internet upload speed, and then a hardware solution to combine these sources. So when we talk about Roland solution, we have our uh, AV mixers here. And so let me just, uh, so, um, okay. So over here I have the uh, VR1 HD, and then these are two picture in picture windows. So you can see on the top left, I have the preview output, and on the top right, that's the program output. And here I can switch between sources, and I'm going to load up some still images as well for input three. But you can see by pressing the different input buttons, I can cycle between my sources. And if I want to do a multi-window layout, I can um, say use like the picture in picture like that. Um, so there's these preset scenes that you can also utilize to um, add multiple layers to a composition. And let me start by showing you uh, the back of this VR1. So right here on the back, you can see, oh, that's the front. Okay, here's the back. So we have three multi-format video inputs, and uh, these video inputs 
are uh, can accept a variety of resolutions. So whether it's a 720p or a 1080i source going in, and you can have it all go out 1080p. Uh, so you can see right there on the back, those three video inputs can take in different resolutions. And uh, input three also for gamers has a throughout. So if you don't want to add any uh, latency to the signal that you want to monitor, like say a game console, you put that in input three. And then those two outputs, one is that full view you saw on the top right, and the other in the top left is that monitor preview. And for the uh, USB stream, um, that all important blue port, utilizing a USB 3.0 cable, which I have connected to the back. And just to help you differentiate, I want to briefly show you, this is a USB 2 cable, and then this is a USB 3.0 super speed. So if you connect this, the readout in the menu will just say high speed, and you won't be able to do the full HD resolution on the USB output. So you want to make sure that you have, and that's the super speed logo, so you want to make sure you have a USB cable that has super speed out, and um, you can connect that to a computer. So the other end of this cable is um, just a USB type A. Um, you could also you know, get a, a cable that terminates with USB type C and utilize that as well. And that can go into our capture software. A free, v, a free download is a VR capture for recording, or you can also uh, use the RCS control software on the VR1 and VR4 HD. And uh, you saw also on the side, there's that second mic input. So you have two mic inputs that can control the video switching as well as the RCA line in. So. Um, I'm going to show you some of the automation features on this product, and then these also apply to the VR4 and the VR50 HD. So, for example, video follows audio, which we can enable using the auto switching function. We'll let the mics do the switching for you. And this one I like to demo because um, it's pretty neat, and it scales up by model in this product family. So for instance, if you have a VR4 HD, you have four mic inputs that you can utilize for this. And if you have a VR50 HD Mark II, you can do up to six microphones um, with this feature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect my mics. And if you have any questions uh, that you wanna email Roland support directly about, about these products, uh, you can email proavhelp at roland.com and I can uh, help answer those. And of course, I'm, you can contact uh, Full Compass with your questions and they can communicate with me as well. So, so I have two microphones connected. As you can see those XLRs are right there. I just gotta set up my gain staging for these two dynamic microphones. So. Another thing I need to do is I need to change out a source to create kind of like a podcast studio type scenario. So allow me to explain what I'm getting at here. And so input one is like our wide shot of the podcast studio. And then input two is um, the uh, this presenter. And then input three is the uh, guest on the podcast. So what I need to do is I need to first stage all my audio. So I did a reset, so I'm just gonna move all these knobs to the original value. I'm gonna bring the faders up to Unity here. I'm gonna set the main mix to Unity as well. If I was streaming this off of this unit here, I would turn up the USB stream knob to zero dB there as well. And I'm not using the line input. Next, I want to press this level setup button here. And from there, I can, this menu is really handy because you can mix or mute the HDMI sources because they don't have faders. So any audio, say you have a lav mic connected to a camera and you're running that via HDMI into this mixer. Uh, what you would want to do is you would want to mix that level. Um, you can have a fader that you can map to a MIDI controller in the RCS software, or you can click and drag that fader in the software, um, or you can use this menu to mix or on page four, mute it. But we're going to focus on this here. So I'm using this value knob to move between the settings, as you can see on the top left there. And I push in on a value and it selects it. And from there, I just push and twist 
and I can, if I push down and twist, you see it moves uh, 10 dB at a time. Otherwise, it'll move 1 dB at a time. So that's kind of a little trick if you want to quickly edit a menu setting. You just push in, and then when you push and twist, you can see it's much faster. That's helpful if you're trying to dial in the scaler. So another thing about those multi-format inputs is any multi-format input, in addition to taking a different resolution than the system output, you can also resize and reposition the image. And I have this all feeding into another roll-in mixer, which I can show you uh, the, I'll point out the scaling function when I do the software demo uh, a little later. So I'm going to exit out of this menu. So I have, I added about 20 dB of boost to the preamps. So that page two setting was the, the preamps for these two mics. And now what I'm gonna do is I wanna set up auto switching. So I'm gonna go into my menu and I'm gonna go down to auto switching here and I'm gonna change the type from beat sync to video follows audio. The release time is two seconds. This gives it a fairly natural feel so it won't trigger another transition until it's been two seconds. And so yeah, here's the mic sensitivity. You can adjust that if you want to, to kind of dial in the mics if they're, if they're triggering too easily. And then I want to set up my selects. So my wide shot is input one. So I want, if they're both below the threshold, it's going to input one. If they're both above the threshold, it's going to go to input one. And then mic one is the uh, podcast host, input two. Mic two, the guest, input three. And you can enable it up here, or you can use this button. So once I press this, he's talking, so it goes to him. Now he's talking, goes to him. And now they're both talking and it goes to the wide. And if I let go, it'll stay on the wide, unless one of these microphones, and granted they are in close proximity, so anything is possible, it will pick up the voice. But it's not going over the threshold. These are off axis from my voice. And I'm gonna tap that one again. As I let go, notice that natural release time when they both fall below the threshold, it's gotta clear that two seconds and then back to him. So this is a powerful feature. It scales up by model. So the VR, and you can turn it off right there. Um, so you can do uh, four microphones on the VR4 HD and six microphones on the VR50. And that's a great way to automate your production. Additional automation features, audio follows video. So with this, a uh, particularly helpful for the HDMI sources is that it helps automate channel mutes. So if an input is selected and audio follows is on, the, the embedded audio on that HDMI input is an open channel. So what's embedded audio? Embedded audio is, is um, the audio that is carried on the HDMI or SDI cable uh, from the source, whether it's a uh, media player, a laptop, or, um, or a camera with a mic connected, or even the camera's internal mic. So say you have a camera with an internal mic and it's getting into your mix, you know, again, go to that level setup and go to page four and you can just mute it right here. Shortcuts too with the menu. If you hold the menu button and then press anything or move a fader, you can edit it. So if I wanna change the line input settings, I could press and hold menu. And if I move this, all of a sudden it kicks me straight to that menu, which is located in menu, audio input line. So rather than take three steps, I can do it with a single shortcut. So just press and hold if I want to edit input one settings. So scaling inputs, we're talking about that zoom control. So you can see here, I can kind of zoom and also change, oops, I want to make that 100% again and change the position of it. So you can kind of set it up that way. And you can also get the input status. So here it's a 10, 1080i5994. And uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna bring in graphics and show you a neat little overlay trick. We'll, we'll do the basic graphics first here. Um, so I have the Roland logo on input three with a bright green background from my presentation source. So what I want to do is I want to key it out. So again, using the shortcut, I can do this, menu and key. I wanna change the key color to green. 
with the 1.20 update, there are three options for that. And let's see. Then my source is going to be HDMI 3. And so I'm going to go back to input 1. And now when I press the key button, you're going to see the logo. So if you need to adjust if you need to adjust the uh, amount of keying and the effect, you can increase the level followed by the gain. And uh, notice if you extract too much, it'll start to eat away at the uh, graphic that you have there. And also this key layer can be scaled with the latest updates. So you can uh, zoom and position it. So if I need to make that logo a little smaller, I can do this and then resize and change the position without having to go into my presentation file. The uh, next thing I want to show you is these scene effects earlier I showed you. And you know there's some cool things you can do with the transitions on this as well. You can change it to a motion transition. So when you call the picture in picture, it'll slide it up and slide it back down. But I'm going to go back to the standard mix fade. And I'm going to customize one of these scenes. So I'm going to edit scene E. and Instead of being a split, I'm going to make it picture by picture. So I have my, oh, I don't have my guest anymore. So we're just going to use these two available shots here. But I now have the key enabled over it. I'm going to take it down for a second and bring in a new graphic that I made. And there we go. So with this, I'm able to use the P by P scene to create this overlay, uh, which is good for streaming a conference or an event. So, um, you know, with that, I, you know, that Roland logo is not from the previous uh, graphic. That's something that I included on this one that I composed on a, you know, on a presentation software and output as a slide. So I have the, you know, conference name of the event and the date. And, you know, you can imagine the presentation on one side and the speaker on the other. If you uh, you know look around the web, that's uh, you know popular form uh, format for presentations. And if I wanted to go back to you know full screen, then you can also set up with the switching. You can set up the uh, the key switch. So maybe you want it to be off before the transition. And if I want to go back to full screen, then you know lose it and then go back to my full wide like that. And next, I'm going to briefly show you the software. I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit here before we move on to the VR4. Just want to show you this RCS software. There we go. So yeah, here is the uh, RCS software, and just so you can see it, um, I just make the USB connection to the computer. And then click connect. So now, when you first do it, it says the data is not consistent. And you have to choose which one you want to overwrite the other. So I want my V1, VR1 HD hardware to overwrite it. And so now you can see that the two will be in sync. And just to show you the program out there, I will uh, just click around. And you can see that, and I'm going to touch the button, one controls the other. And so this is the scaler that I'm talking about. I'm using the VR50 HD switcher to zoom in and out of uh, my extended desktop on the computer. But I'm just going to use this to show you some of the functions here. Um, the audio mixer is enhanced in the software. You can map this to a USB MIDI controller, right click, learn MIDI control. But clicking the setup button here, I can adjust the EQ and dynamics as well. And there's a compressor and limiter for the analog input channels. And then the, the uh, embedded channels uh, have in, uh, have a just an EQ. And uh, so yeah, all the system settings are available here as well. Quick access to the key settings. And um, you can dial in uh, audio effects. You can load sound effects um, or even reassign the voice changer and reverb effect to be additional background music or one-shot sound effects. And 
Also, one more automation feature that I left out in the VR series is auto mixing. So uh, it's like an, similar to like an auto mixer hardware where you, or, or plug-in where you just turn on the channels that you want to be auto mixed. And the VR4 and the 50 also have a version of this where you can uh, adjust uh, the weight so they give a higher priority to some sources over another. And in addition to this, we also have um, the VR capture software, which I'll show you quickly. So this is the uh, free capture software. And um, let me turn my picture in picture off. But you can see that um, it is taking the USB output and converting it to video. So you can record it to a video file on your computer, just hitting that button there. Choose which directory it's going to. And save it as a uh, MP4 file um, in an and, uh, H.264 encoded. Um, you can also do ProRes on Mac, an MOV container. Um, but yeah, so these are the software solutions. These are free downloads on the product pages. So you can get VR capture for all three, and then you get the RCS, Windows and Mac uh, for um, uh, VR1 and VR4 HD. So I'm going to take a moment to change over um, to the VR4. And um, let me also improve this uh, display here. Let's see. Justin, while you're doing that, maybe we could jump in with a quick question here for you on mm -hmm. that unit. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Does the VR1 HD have phantom power? That comes from Luis. Yes, Luis. Uh, the phantom switch is on the side. And um, so you can you can access it um, on the uh, left side of the unit. It's a physical switch. Okay. Uh, and, there's one other question. This may I'm going to save this other one for uh, towards the end. So back to you. Okay. Yeah. And so let me see. Let me just close this here. Okay, so here is going to resume here. This is the well, I might as well show you the whole thing right here. So, this is the VR4 HD, and let's see here how that let's see if we get a decent view of it there. So, I'm just going to move this down a little more. So, yeah, this is the VR4 HD. So, you can see there are more buttons and mixer controls on this overall. Same sort of, you know, if you're familiar with uh, mixers that have a T-bar, this kind of simplifies the process in the VR series. You just have a single row of video input select buttons, and you can choose the transition type. In the case of the VR1, you can choose it in the menu. With the VR4, it's like if I want to do cut transitions, I just do that there, and I can do my cut switching. And as you can see there, too, let me just uh, touch on my focus real quick. There we go. So yeah, I kind of magnified the uh, the LCD as best as I can with uh, this one here in my current lighting situation. But um, I'm going to take a few minutes to go over this. So all those automation features we talked about at the beginning with VR1, um, those, those are uh, in the VR4 as well. So you have... Uh, you can see auto mixing is up there. Um, this is echo cancellation. You can bring inbound USB audio. And then I realized too, is I'm gonna to elaborate on HTCP in just a moment to answer Jim's question in more detail. The uh, USB controls, so everything kind of has also a, a shortcut menu via button here. So I can just press, you know, set up right here and it opens, you know, this menu on the LCD. So you can see this is magnified. Again, so you know this is the actual what you can see, and I'm just trying to make boost it as best I can there. Um, but yeah, you can touch you know any setting. So like you can see that for the preamps, they have their own gain knobs. But these knobs up here for HDMI audio, and these are not preamps. These are actually um, the level controls for the faders. So you can see here is actually if I'm moving this and I bring it up to here, then the fader is right around Unity. So right there, bring it to the dot. So this is for managing the HDMI audio. If you have you know, a lav mic on a camera, you can mix it here. Um, or if you have a media player playing uh, um, 
uh, audio in the video file. You know, you can do manual fade in and fade out, or you can use that audio follow to automate the mutes, uh, like we were talking about with uh, audio follows video earlier. And then in the menu here, you have you know similar controls, but a different layout. Um, one trick too is that if you're not using the echo cancellation and you want to put video follows audio, that was a feature that was added to firmware 2.0. You can just go to user setup. You can tap assign right in the corner there, and you can change it from echo cancel to auto switching. So now when I press this, you know, uh, video follows audio once it's configured would appear there. So, yeah. There we go. So, um, also it has a single picture in picture window, just like the VR1. The VR50 has two simultaneous picture in picture windows. And then you can, let me change my graphic here to a, so I'm gonna change my graphic to a song and I can set up the key for that. And that's independent. So, and we'll do a dissolve transition in on this model. So chroma, I'm gonna change the type to green. Again, this value knob and setup button functions in a similar way to the menu on the VR1 HD. And so I'm going to stick with that default key level. And now when I press that button, I can bring graphics in and out. I can do my cut transitions. I can do a picture in picture and choose the inset window and then go into the PIP menu and adjust the size and border position. Again, using that, pushing in that knob to quickly move it. This supports different shapes. You could do like a diamond or a circle or a heart, as well as the aspect ratio. So you can tighten that and also reposition the image within the picture in picture window. And then you can do cut switching between the two PIP sources, just like that. And when you're done, you can press that to lose it. And another nice thing too is that in the VR1 you had to go into that transition menu to change the uh, the length of the transition value, and but with time you can sort of set a global value um, for the key effect. So if I want a longer dissolve out, I can just turn this up, and then whenever I do a mix or a wipe, that also affects the transition time for that as well. So you know if you got some pre preset positions that you like, or just kind of you know just just kind of set custom transitions that way if you want longer dissolves or if you're just doing cuts you can do that and then this will still follow the time value on this knob here so um that is basics of the vr4 in a nutshell but we should cover the back of course as well um so you can see that there are three hdmi inputs that are separate from input number four so what this means is that input number four is a multi-format scaling input. The inputs one through three, the format uh, needs to match. There is an exception to this though. It will cross convert 1080 between interlaced and progressive video. So if you have 1080i cameras, you can output 1080p from the switcher and it will cross convert it for you. And if you have a 720p source or say you have something that is um, you know, computer resolution all the way up to 19, 20 by 1200 you can run that into input 4 you can also do rgb or composite into input 4 and that has a scaler for the multi format support and you can uh, reposition and resize it uh, some additional features on this is uh, rs232 out um, as well as on the 50 and then a tally gpio port so you can uh, custom wire tally that information is in our reference manual which is available on the uh, pro av site in the download section um, so that uh, offers some more control you can create some custom switches and wire it to it um, so yeah sky's the limit with that documentation and you can see as additional uh, audio inputs and outputs um, all three of these units have an aux audio send so for uh, a separate audio mix and you could even have the usb stream utilize that um, there are sends that are um, that are in uh, each audio input channel and then there are two sends in the vr50 hd which we will get to next um, but before i 
yeah, so I just want to recap on some of these uh, features. Um, and I'm going to begin to set up the VR50 HD. And I'll try to address these as best I can here while I'm moving about. Are there uh, any questions uh, in between the setups here? Yeah, I, there's uh, one here. It says, and I'll let you answer this one. It's what, what equipment is needed to connect professional soundboard with a camera for live streaming. So basically, if you're using this piece of equipment and they have a, a soundboard taking care of all of the sound, what's the connection that happens there? Well, yeah. So, uh, you know, depending on the connectivity, I mean, the easiest way would probably just to, to do, if you have a short run to do RCA at line level and you can just bring it straight in and not have to do any level matching. Um, you can also utilize the XLR or um, quarter inch combo inputs. And uh, just note that you want to turn the preamp down almost to zero. And you may need to do like a 10, 10 dB boost to level match, um, but you're gonna have to, you know, run a test tone from through your mixer channel and make sure everything is properly gain staged and calibrated um, for that test tone. And then, uh, you know, once you have that reference level in, you know, just set and forget with the uh, audio on the VR1. And so you can just send them, you know, a mix or a bus out of your console and uh, just feed this and it'll go out the HDMI and USB, or if it's a model of SDI, then, you know, the SDI will embed the output audio as well. Excellent. We have, while you're doing that, we have another uh, question here from Eric. Uh, could you explain the difference uh, when we were looking at the back view there, uh, the difference and what the usage would be or how you would use it between the HDMI out versus the through? How do you use the HDMI out versus, yeah, so the HDMI out is going to combine all the video signals. So that would be, you know, your video mix. And then um, then the through is just if you had, say, a game console or some other device that is, that is latency sensitive. Um, because, you know, you're trying to monitor your the input from your video game controller during gameplay. Um, then you would use the uh, um, the loop out for that. So I think I got a decent setup here. I just got to um, slide okay. this into slide this into position. That's all we have uh, on, on the question front. Again, uh, everybody, go ahead and, and keep typing those questions in and we will address them when when we when we get there usually at the end but if we have spaces in the middle we'll throw those in there as well so all yours justin oh excellent thank you jim yeah this will be the the final stop on our uh, live stream here so let me just uh got a lot of cable management here <laughs> at home but all right hopefully this you can see my monitor a little bit let me zoom in a little more okay so you can see i kind of use those picture in pictures to kind of create a uh, little magnified menu there so you can see it a little better. Oops. Let's see. I set up all these presets yesterday. So let's see if that holds up. Sorry, just one overhead camera for this uh, demo. So um, make the most of it here. But yes, uh, hopefully uh, you can all get a good view right now here of the VR50 HD. Mark II. So this was uh, released um, back in September, and it's an update of the uh, the popular and beloved Mark I. Um, so there were some uh, nice improvements. They added solo and mute buttons to the panel, so it's more hands-on of an audio mixer. And you can see there's uh, gain controls that were added for mics um, five and six. Um, so those are going to inputs uh, five, line inputs five and seven can double as mic inputs. And I'm going to show you a picture of the back too, just so we can kind of uh, cover the IO here. So let me lose that picture in picture window right there. So you can see there are four mic inputs and four uh, pairs of uh, line inputs. And um, as well as those two aux ends that I mentioned earlier in the outputs there, um, there's LAN control. So this can be connected to uh, up to six PTZ cameras from JVC and Panasonic. Uh, there's some about 11 total models that are compatible with this. 
And so you have the controls right in the LCD menu. You do the network setup and you can recall presets and change the pan, tilt, and zoom settings for the camera. And then, yeah, so on the inputs, you have four HDMI and four SDI inputs, as well as two RGB and two com uh, composite inputs. And these are all multi-format, so they can be scaled, resized, and repositioned. And then you have four primary outputs that can be assigned as program, preview, or aux. And you're asking, what's aux? If you want to feed a center screen with a separate mix, like I have um, you know, four SDI cameras here, and you know, say I have, I want to send a different, so, you know, I want to send, you know, this out to a separate monitor feed downstage, confidence monitor uh, for a presenter or the projector, and you know, you don't, you just want a graphic or presentation source, and you don't want it to be, and you don't want it to be, um, what do you call it, um, a camera on the center screen. I can go to input assign too and change it over to this. And so now I'm sending via uh, an aux output, I'm sending four. So I have that feed right there. Um, or if you don't want to have that be utilized like that, you could even do the one of these composition layers. So this is like the same as the key, but there's three different on the VR4, but there's three different options here. You have a picture in picture, a picture in picture with a chroma key. And these can also be made full screen if you want to flex in an additional source. Because remember, you have those 12 simultaneous inputs. And then still key is for uh, keying a still image. So of the three models, um, so VR1, you can import a still via USB, and uh, you can import up to four active stills on the VR50. So um, in the VR4, you can load a uh, still temporarily through the RCS software. I have a guide for that on our support pages um, if you're interested in setting that up on a uh, VR4. So if I go to load, I have this USB memory stick connected, and I'm going to choose that familiar Roland logo that you saw uh, earlier in the presentation. So there we go. So now I have loaded in the still image slot one. And this is a touch screen too. So I can go back and forth, you know, between these different sources. And if I want to do a mixed transition and set the time, I can do that. And then I can go to a still and then back to live. So, you know, very flexible with the hands on controls. Um, similar to the VR4, you just press. Um, and these buttons and you get the full channel strip and you know, magnify this menu a bit. Hopefully that helps uh, visually. Um, but yeah, phantom power on this model is not done with switches. It's done through the menu. So you just turn it on there. There's your preamp gain, which is that gain control right here. Um, and then additional digital trim, which is available on all three models. Uh, individual input delays are on each model as well if you need to sync up sources through your unit's headphone mix. Um, once you have that all straightened out, you can then also do audio delay on the USB output, which is right here. Sorry, I've been using the Mark I a lot lately and the menu is slightly different. So that's where my mind was. But yeah, so you can see too is that this model has the most control over the USB output resolutions. So you can either do 720p, 1080p, you can even do 480p on this model, and you can do either frame rate of 5994 or 2997. Um, so you know, typically if I'm I'm outputting into my streaming setups. Usually I'm doing 1080p 30, the increased resolution to help with clarity on streaming platforms. Um, but when I'm streaming the Facebook Live, I have to bring it down to 720p 30 anyway. So you can adjust the scaling in this menu. And it will reset the USB connection. It won't instantly change it. So um, you have to keep that in mind as well, not to do this during a uh, webcast. Um, and this, of course, this one here is not connected to this is not connected to this stream. I'm actually feeding all of this into a VR50 HD Mark I, and that is the uh, central component of my streaming setup. So each input has a scaler, um, just like the VR1 HD and input four on the VR4 HD. So you can see the menu settings there. And uh, auto mixing, you have that um, same auto mixing. That was that weight control I mentioned so you can assign more of a priority to the um, to the channels there this is a video follows audio um, as we went over on the VR1 you can see it's uh, a little more advanced 
on the 50. There's uh, up to six mics that you can mix and different mix condition scenarios. So you have three pages of settings to uh, go with on that. And another cool thing about this input assign menu is it tells you what resolutions are coming in. And you'll see that I have, well, this one is identical. So, but I have different sources for HDMI. So you can see there that, you know, we're looking at SDI throughout this, but you can also bring in an HDMI source. And not only can you do that through this menu, but if you make this green down here, I can switch between the SDI and HDMI source just by pressing these buttons here. And then these ones will cycle through um, all four modes because it has the analog and uh, um, RGB. But, you know, three and four, you could quickly flex in a different camera. I'll bring up programs. You can see I can go to it. So there, change it back there. So that's a way to flex in additional shots. You can also assign, even if you have all SDI on your four input channels, and say you're not using this picture in picture window, you could change the source of this to one of the HDMIs. You know, so that's like right there. That's one of the shots that we don't have, right? Um, and then if you go into detail, you can turn off the PIP window. And now you can bring in this fifth shot right off the PIP. And it will overlay that, but but again, you can see you can bring it in and out as an additional shot, and you can even cut it in and out as well if you change the transition to cut. This unit will follow the transition for you know transition controls. And then pip and key, of course, I'd set to you know HDMI four, and you know there I could you know turn this window off as well if I don't need a picture in picture window. I just turn the window off and I turn the key on chroma green. I increase the level here in the menu or down here with this, and there it is. So then I have a graphic source, and then I can also uh, bring in this, the still image. And if I have a still image with, uh, you know, green in it, I can key that out as well and have a, you know, like a transparent full screen logo as um, one of my still sources. So I would just change, you know, say I had it loaded into still four, for example, and then I can bring it in and out. Uh, that way as well. So I did run a little bit long on the uh, on the 50 here. I want to do definitely save some time to um, answer uh, any questions. And um, circling back to us, you know, I keep forgetting. And here we are, uh, HDCP. Uh, I just want to cover that briefly. So um, what uh, Jim was talking about uh, earlier during the VR4 segment was uh, having sources with uh, HDCP. Uh, compliance and so that could be you know a streaming media box it could be um, so yeah it could be a streaming media box device it could be a blu-ray player most commonly um, these sources will not pass through the system because of copyright protection if you need it to get passed through the system there is a way to do it in the setup menu by turning on HTCP the device will do a soft reset but there are some limitations that you have to uh, keep in mind and uh, one is that it will disable the SDI and USB outputs and you ask why does it do that um, well that's part of the HTCP compliance is to ensure that the device passing through the system can't be streamed or recorded for example, if you just start running Blu-rays through the switcher and out to a recorder, it would be an easy way to um, copy a movie. So by turning on HTCP, you can get the signal through the switcher. So you can mix cameras and a Blu-ray source uh, out to a display like a projector um, you know, for an event. Um, but know that that source uh, could not necessarily be recorded. But if you needed to pass through the video system to get it out through your signal distribution path on all of our models, including the V-Series switchers, you can turn on HTCP in the system menu. It's usually the first option. And then it will do a soft reset of the product, and then you'll be good to go. Okay, are there uh, any questions in general or any, uh, if you want me to go back to an earlier product and, and, and focus on a particular area of that, that's not a problem either. 
All right, we got a <clears throat> excuse me. We got a question on the uh, the BR50 right there. While well, you got it. Oh, perfect. And it, it sounds like you started to touch on it, but uh, didn't quite dig into that the question here. This comes from Chip. Uh, do all four HDMI inputs, as far as the resolution is concerned, have to match, or can nope. you mix 720 and 1080 or any of the resolutions? A absolutely, absolutely. Chip, yeah, you can mix. Um, a variety of resolutions with uh, the 50. So this is kind of one of those devices where just about anything you plug into it um, should pop up as a signal. And again, if you press this input assign button, you can get a readout of the incoming resolution. Probably wondering why that those are all 1080i. Those are what my media players output. So this is pre-recorded footage that we did from a uh, video shoot for the uh, V8 HD. And um, so I use this footage because it gives me seven different band shots. And, um, you know, if, if some of these were 720, they would fit right into this system because it will automatically uh, scale it all to match the menu video output. And so, yeah, the output format on this is 1080p. And then the USB output is, is separate. And that was what I was showing earlier. So in the USB streaming menu, we have... Um, the uh, the different resolution and frame rate you can individually set for the USB output, which is separate from the main physical video outs. Okay, we have a question here from Jim. Uh, Jim asks, are there any audio follows video? I think he answered this earlier on, but any audio follows video options when multiple HDMI inputs include video and audio? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So audio follows video is is um, also kind of like two tiered. So on on this model, it's a little different. So what you're gonna see is that um, yeah. So here you have the line inputs. Uh, I and... don't have your video up here. We just have the questions screen here. Oh, uh, okay. It, oh, 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 okay. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'll just yeah, I can answer this no problem. Um, yeah. So, like on the VR4 HD, it's like a matrix screen, right? And so you can say, basically, how audio follows video works is you say when I have input X selected, the following audio channels are open and the rest are muted. So when audio follows video tur is turned on. For, for example, on the VR4, say you have it like when I'm on my wide shot, I only want mics one and two. I want all mics to be open and I want no HDMIs to be. I want all the HDMIs to be muted. You can do that. And then it's like, well, when I go to input two, I only want mics one and two to be open. And, you know, same for input three. And then when I go to input four, which is my media player, I only want HDMI four to be open and I want all the mics to be muted. So it's kind of like. It's kind of you're creating different automation of the mutes based on the input that is selected at a given moment. And so that gives you, you know, that's kind of a safety net during your production to make sure you don't have an accidentally have a channel open. And if you're already video switching, maybe you don't want to be constantly moving the faders all the way down. You know, you want to keep your faders maybe up and make your make your mix adjustments, but then have the peace of mind that those channels are muted when you have certain input selections made with the audio follow settings. Excellent. Uh, one more short question here, and I think we'll start to wrap things up. Uh, again, from Jim, uh, which models have the audio follows video? Yeah, so the um, models with audio follows video are pretty much all of them, even all the way down to the uh, the, v the two input VO2 HD. It's a pretty standard feature across our whole product line of uh, V series, VR series mixers that have um, and switchers. You know, so I believe them. Some of the matrix switchers have it too as well. So yeah, it's a pretty universal feature in our product lineup. That, that's, I mean, the, these units, Justin, are just absolutely packed with features. It's amazing how much they do and the quality. Uh, we have several here that we've used. We've used them in our rentals department, use them for all kinds of presentations and streaming on our side as well. So outstanding products. Oh, glad to hear it, Jim. Thank you. So I think, Justin, that we're going to wrap things up here. Again, one, once again, thanks for joining us here. And thanks for all the, man, that was a deep dive and a, and a <laughs> lot of information there. 
Uh, just a reminder, at the end of this, we do have a very short survey for everybody. If you could fill that out, put your comments in there. We welcome the comments, good, bad, or indifferent, um, as to how, how you like this webinar and, and anything future that you would like to see as well. Uh, so one last thing, Justin, again, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. All the way oh, from. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you for hosting. This was uh, this was a great opportunity to to run through these three products. I mean, the, you know, they have they add a lot of value to production. You know, I definitely want to say once more too that those automation features, you know, can especially help during this time when it can be difficult to get uh, volunteers um, or staff to help with multi-camera production. So, you know, the idea that the microphones could do the switching for you is a is a powerful tool that's built into these three models. Awesome. And, and, and one more time, a, a, a big thank you to everybody at Roland. Uh, uh, been very, very helpful with uh, all of us here at Full Compass. So I think we're going to wrap things up. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll see you on the next webinar. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.